Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Engage in the Word here at the Embassy Church. I am Elder Frank, and tonight I greet the Embassy family and all those that are visiting online in love. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, if you haven't already, I would ask that you would like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you pass this to your friends, to your family members. Y'all make sure y'all share this on your Facebook, all social medias. We need to make sure that the gospel, the word is being spread everywhere. Amen. And as always, I would like to give honor to those who it's always due to. That's our apostle, Apostle Kenneth K. Law and our first lady, who is Dr. Lawanda Law. I bless God for them, and I always pray a greater grace for the both of them in their journey in this thing called Christ. I bless God for that. Tonight, y'all, I will be continuing in this ministry's, uh, it's pretty much an ongoing theme, it's an ongoing series that's going on at this church. And that title for that is called Immersed. And tonight, I'll be teaching <laughs> a message that I was given under the unction of the Holy Spirit that's entitled Immersed in His Will. Y'all, God's will for you is to be set apart. God's will is for you to be holy. He wills for you to live in him. That's God's will for your life. So for everybody that's tuned in, I want you to make sure that you have your Bibles. Make sure that you have your piece of paper so you can take you some notes. Because it's always important for us to study to show ourselves approved. So let me go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for being so wonderful, so mighty, so great, so strong and faithful in our lives. I thank you that you are who you are. And because we've grown to know who you are in our lives, Father, we can let the small things roll off of our back. So tonight we come seeking you. We come seeking you fervently. We come seeking you with expectation. We come seeking you with the joy in our heart, asking God that you would open our ears to hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying. Father, we ask for fresh revelation. We ask for fresh wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We ask God that you would allow the word to fall and rest within our hearts so that as a collective group, as the body of Christ, we will not continue to sin against you. But Father, tonight I ask you for growth, for development. God, let our characters be formed and shaped and redefined in you. Father, I bless you for being who you are. Continue to cover the embassy church. Continue to cover everybody that's watching. Cover them by the very blood of Jesus. Keep them in their homes. Keep their families. In these holiday seasons of times, I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke all those creeping things that creep into the mind of your people. I rebuke the sounds and voices of the enemies that come against us in these seasons i thank you god that in you we find life we find joy we find peace we find out everything so tonight god we come seeking for our everything we come seeking for you bless us this night god we love you in jesus name i pray amen listen i bless god for y'all being with me tonight i thank god for this word that god has given me the word immerse was introduced by apostle law a few weeks back and ever since then i've been focused on relationship with god i've been focused on relationship with christ and not just relationship but the fruit that it bears see it's one thing to be in relationship with somebody or be in relationship with christ but nobody can tell <laughs> some people like to hide their relationship, but as a believer, there should always be some kind of sign, something tangible to show us that we are marked in Christ. There should always be something that's visible in our relationship with Jesus. So to be, con to be immersed, y'all, in Christ means that I'm consumed by him. I'm wrapped up in his will. It means that I'm in him and, and he's in me. It means that wherever I go, he goes. <laughs> and wherever he leads me, I go. It's a standing relationship. So when you see me, whether I'm in a good place or whether I'm in a bad place, you still see him. Oh, I say that again. When you see me, whether I'm in a good place or whether I'm in a bad place, you still see Jesus in my life. You still see him. See, to be immersed is to daily revive the life of Christ within you. To daily revive. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of John, uh, starting at chapter 15. I'm going to be reading from verse 4 through 5, and this is coming out of the Amplified Version. Go ahead and get your Bibles. I know some of y'all are sitting at home. You're probably eating or snacking or doing something, but get your word out so you can follow me in this text. Amen. And the word reads as follows. It says, remain in me 
and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Oh, I love that word. See, in this amplified version of the scripture, it uses the words remain instead of abide. See, we're used to the word abide, but when I saw the, the, the reading, the word said remain, I meant to study that word. And see, the definition of the word remain is to continue to exist, especially after other similar or related people or things have ceased to exist. And it also means to stay in the place that one has been occupying. So Jesus is saying, I'll continue to live and stay in this place within you that I now occupy. If you continue to live and stay in this place that I occupy, watch this, along with me. Oh, this is a partnership. This is a partnership thing. See, a thriving church and a thriving people are those that are committed and deeply involved in the will of God. See, when you're immersed in Christ, it shows within the consistent development of your character. It's always some kind of development. It's God is always shaping and molding us. Y'all, God is always at work within you because that's his will for you. His will concerning your life is for you to be set apart. You're a special people. You're a chosen people. His will is for you to be better. His will is for you to be holy, sanctified, set apart just for him. See, that's God's will. But when you're immersed in his will, you're seeking the things that pleases him. See, as believers, we should always be moving from glory to glory and from faith to faith. See, this is only accomplished when there's an intentional commitment. It's not something you just do when you feel like it. There has to be an intentional commitment and desire to remain in him while he remains in us. Somebody type in remain in him, remain in him. I want that to keep, let that continue to ring in your spirit throughout this teaching. Remain in him. That's important. See, there's no possible way to bear fruit that produces evidence of your faith unless you remain in Christ. See, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. I want to give you this great example. This example is, see, everybody loves Wi-Fi. Everybody loves Wi-Fi because in specific areas or spaces, when the connection is spotty or you have no connection at all. See, Wi-Fi gives you access. Although it's stationary, it's within the space that it occupies. Within the space that it occupies. See, good Wi-Fi even affects the functionality of whatever it's connected to. It affects the functionality of your phone. It affects the functionality of your laptop. It affects the functionality of whatever, whatever equipment requires connectivity. See, as believers, we require connectivity with Christ. But watch this. See, everything begins to function the way it was created when it has a good connection. When it has a good connection. See, the problem with this is that when you leave the area you lose the kind of connection that gives access to the evidence of what you're actually capable of doing. See, what am I saying? I'm saying when you're immersed in Christ, when you continue to live in Christ, when you're committed to Christ, your life will begin to produce the kind of evidence that shows who you're connected to. Oh, let me ask you this question. Watch this, watch this. If you were arrested for being a spirit-filled believer, would there be enough evidence in your life to convict you of that charge? I want to say that again. I'm going to ask you this question. If you were arrested for being a spirit-filled believer, would there be enough evidence in your life for you to be convicted of that crime? Is there enough evidence in your life to prove that you really are a spirit-filled believer? Watch this. Jesus was saying in the, scripture, in the scriptures that when you're connected where you go, I go. So if you stay in me, I'll be with you when you make decisions about your relationships. Or watch this. If you stay in me, I'll be with you when you make decisions about your career. If you stay with me, I'll be with you to make sure you're a good steward over your finances. I'll make sure that you're being good with the things that I have given you. 
See, if you stay in him, he'll make sure that you learn how to love your brother as you love yourself. Somebody type it in again for me. Type in remain in him, remain in him, remain in him. See, as believers, we often live we live life, we live this life really hard by remaining in a spotty relationship with God. So you can't be in on Sunday and then out on Monday and expect to see change or transformation in your life. That's not how this thing works. This is a, a, a two-person relationship. We dance in this thing together. You can't be in on Sunday, out on Monday. I need you to be in every day of the week. This is a life thing. You're supposed to be com completely committed and immersed in the will of God. Watch this. Apostle Paul was so immersed in Christ that he said in the book of Romans 14 and 8, he said, he said, for if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. See, he was so immersed in Christ that whether in life or even in death, Nothing would stop him from belonging to the Lord. See, that's called pursuit. He was committed in his relationship with God. He was committed to who God was. Watch this. Commitment is a required core value when it comes to having success in any area of your life. People like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, these men were so committed to their vision that it immersed the world into their thoughts. I'll say that again. These men were so committed to their vision that it immersed the whole world in their thoughts. And watch this. Some of us spend more time being immersed in what they created than we do in the one that created us. <laughs> Some of us spend more time being immersed in everything electronic, everything futuristic, everything going on in this world. You spend more time in Amazon Prime <laughs> than you do in the face of the Lord. Isn't that something else? You're immersed in the thoughts of somebody else, but not in the thoughts of the one that created you. And this is why it is important for us to be wrapped up and consume in his will. Because when we're immersed in him, the world gets to witness through us the thoughts of God. They get to see what God is thinking. They get to see what God has already thought concerning us. And there are people out there are waiting to see. You say you love God. You say that God is your source. He's your strength. I want to see what his thoughts are concerning you because your life is a little dirty. Your life is a little raggedy. Your life is a little ratchet. What does God think about you? Does God still see you as a son? Does he still see you as a daughter? Does he still see you as his righteousness? Oh, but see, when you're immersed in the will of God, when you're immersed in the thoughts of God, you still see yourself as he sees you. Regardless of what you've done, regardless of your past or where you've been, you can only see the thoughts of God when it comes to you. Watch this. When you invest in the will of God, the will of God will invest in your life. See, a lot of people may not understand why you hold the title you hold. A lot of people might not understand why you're in the position that you're in. It's because a lot of them cannot relate, watch this, to the kind of commitment that it took to get there. Some people can't relate. Some people can't relate to the fact that you, regarding everything else going on in your life, some of y'all have full families, some of y'all have children, some of y'all have other obligations, but yet you're so committed in your pursuit of God that it puts you in a certain place or position above others. See, somebody type in, they left, but I remained in him. <laughs> they may have left, they may have given up. But I remained in him. I stayed. I stayed when everybody else left. I stayed committed when everybody else gave up. I stayed committed when everybody else stopped. And that's all about your pursuit and your commitment in God. See, God has purposed and preordained for you a life that should produce evidence that he is with you. <laughs> See, when you're immersed and committed to his will, the word of God says in the book of Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. See, when you're immersed in his will, you hold fast to the word of God because you know he's faithful to perform it. If God has already promised that there's a future and a hope for you, if God has already promised that he has a thing planned for you already and it's bigger than what you can imagine, the word of God said he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can act so even think according to that power that works in you, the God that remains in you. But see, the issue with that is we don't get immersed in him. 
He's occupying a space within you. And you have to get in that space with him. That's the importance of it. See, when you're double-minded, you're never grounded in God. And this affects your ability to be committed to his will. Put it like this, plain and simple. If you're not committed to your spouse, guess what? Your marriage will fail. <laughs> if you're not committed to your health, guess what? Your health will fail. <laughs> if you're not being committed to parenting your children, guess what? Your children just may fail. If you're not committed to Christ, you may fail in your purpose of life. It's about commitment, commitment. See, within this generation, y'all, there lies a major struggle with commitment. Yes, a major struggle with commitment. This is why relationships have turned into situationships. Yeah, that's y'all. This is why situationships have turned into we just vibing together. This is why we just vibing together has turned into, oh, that's just my friend. This is why it's a commitment issue. See, this is why people can't trust you with assignments. This is why people can't trust you at work at home. They can't trust you at work at the job. They can't trust you because they know you're not a committed person. But why? Because they see the level of commitment you have and it's not producing any evidence that you're in him. You want your wife to trust you. You want her to trust you. But she don't see your commitment. You drop things. You let things go. You forget things. Oh, I'm calling you. I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up. <laughs> I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up. You got to come up. This is a reason people struggle with trusting you. And it's a commitment issue. You have to learn how to be committed. When you're immersed in the will of God, everything you do is done with a purpose. Everything you do, you don't do anything by happenstance. It's not a mistake. It's not a, I just bumped into it. No, everything you do is done with a purpose. See, and that purpose is so that God can be glorified. See, I'm, I'm not that old, y'all. But uh, what happened to the kind of people <laughs> that dated with a purpose? See, when I grew up, it was different. What happened to the people that dated with a purpose? It was a purpose behind them even stepping into a courtship with somebody else's daughter or somebody else's son. It was a reason behind that. It was purpose behind it. They saw something that was good enough for them to say, I'm willing to commit my time to this person because I can see the fruit that may come in the future. What happened to people like that? What happened to the kind of people who were given a task and they followed instructions without procrastination? They didn't wait to do it. They did it when they were given it. What happened to those kind of people? Those kind of people have commitment. They're immersed in what his will is. See, when you're immersed in the will of God, truly immersed in the will of God, there's no way possible for evidence not to be seen within your life. See, I love being the person that everybody can count on. See, some people get irritated when everybody calling their name and everybody's looking for them. So you better wear that as a badge of honor. So you better understand that people are only looking for you because they can't trust nobody else. They're only looking for you because they can't trust that nobody else can carry out the assignment. And the problem with that is we, the ones that are trusted, we need to begin to pray for those who can't. Because there needs to be more of them. And that's a visual sign that there's commitment within the body of Christ. People are truly immersed in the will of God. They refuse to let go. See, what I come to find out is that there is a fear of missing out. Oh, yeah, this generation has a fear of missing out. See, this is something that they've been dealing with. It makes them believe that in one place they'll miss out on something going on in another. It may be something better out there for me. See, if, if, you, if, if I commit to following Christ, then I might miss out on what's going on in the world. They struggle with that because the first thing people think when it comes to developing relationship with Jesus, getting to Christ is all of the people and all of the stuff that I got to let go of. Oh, but I might miss out on those Friday nights. I might miss out on those movies I like to watch at night. I might get up in the morning. I might miss out on listening to my favorite radio show. Well, see, when you get into a relationship and you get committed and immersed in the will of God, your mornings are going to be spent in prayer. <laughs> your mornings are going to be spent in the presence and in the face of God. Your nights are going to be spent in your word. You're going to be studying to show yourself approved. There's a different lifestyle. You're not missing out on nothing. You're actually getting involved and getting involved in what you were called to be involved in. And that's the will of God. Watch this. Some people have even struggled when it comes to sewing. Saying, if I commit to sewing cheerfully, then I might miss out on buying me something tomorrow. 
Commitment issues, people. See, this is a trick of the enemy to make you think that the grass is always greener elsewhere when truthfully it's only green in places that you fertilize it. It's only green in the places that you commit to helping it grow. See, your marriage ain't going to grow if you don't commit to helping it grow. Your finances aren't going to grow if you don't commit to those finances growing. It takes commitment. You truly have to be immersed. Being immersed in his will shows up in the decision-making skills in life. God promises provision. Oh, but watch this. But he also asks for us to be good stewards over everything he's given us. We want the provision, but we don't want to be good stewards. We want everything God has for us, but we want to take care of his house. We want everything that God is, is playing in his word, his promises, his promises, his promises all over the Bible. These are the things that he promised us, but yet nobody has promised or made a commitment to follow him. That's an issue. That's a commitment issue. Watch this. You shouldn't be 25 years old with eight different jobs on your resume. Commitment issues. You shouldn't be 25 years old with eight different exes. Something is wrong with you. That is not normal. That is not the will of God concerning your life. And this is to help you understand not to be called out, but to come up. It's time to come up a little higher. That's why I bless God for this series about being immersed. But you have to figure out areas of your life where you're dry. Some of us aren't completely immersed because it shows up in your decision-making skills. You should be further along than you are right now. Why aren't you where you're supposed to be? You're being affected in your areas of commitment. You could have been wrote that book, but you struggle with commitment. You could have been formed that business, but you struggle with commitment. You like the dream. You just don't like to walk in the dream. Oh, my God. Watch this. <laughs> Once you get immersed in his will, you'll be convicted to remain in purpose. It's no possible way that you can be in the will, in the word, in the ways of God and not be convicted when it comes time for purpose. I wouldn't be a good husband if I wasn't convicted by God himself to be immersed in his will. I wouldn't be a good brother. I wouldn't be a good uncle. I wouldn't be a good father if I wasn't convicted by the word and convicted by the will of God to be who he's called me to be. I wouldn't be who I am today if I wasn't convicted by the will of God to be in my purpose. Ah, See, in the Garden of Gethsemane, even Jesus wanted the cup to pass from him. Oh, but he was so immersed in God that he got convicted by his own will and said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. See, I'm so glad that Jesus is selfless and not selfish. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody type, remain in him, remain in him. I'm so glad that Jesus is selfless and not selfish. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus doesn't hold off until tomorrow what I need from him today. This is how you know you're immersed in the will of God. Have you ever been around somebody and they said, I, oh, I just thought about so-and-so. I need to call them. I need to check on them. See, when you're immersed in his will, you know tomorrow is not promised. So everything in you says, no, let me call him right now. I got to figure out why the Holy Spirit is leading me to talk to him. I got to figure out what the Holy Spirit needs me to do for them. I'm so glad God doesn't think like us. I'm so glad his thoughts are not our thoughts because he doesn't hold off tomorrow what he knows I need from him today. Oh, God, I need you right now. I don't need you tomorrow at 8 o'clock when I go to work. I need you right now. I need you to be with me now. I need you to walk with me, dwell with me, rest in me, remain <laughs> in me right now. I need that right now. See, it's because he's committed to us that I'm still here today. In the book of Ecclesiastes, I believe, chapter 11 and 4, and it reads from the New Living Translation. It says, farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. Oh, my God, y'all. It says, farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. See, listen to me. Stop waiting for a moment of perfection to get immersed in Christ. Stop waiting for a moment of perfection to perform. Ooh, I'm going to say that one more time. Stop waiting for a moment of perfection to perform. There is no such thing as a moment of perfection. There is no such thing. 
See, when you're immersed in him, when you're immersed in his will, you're immersed in his ways, you move when you hear the Holy Spirit give you an option. You move when the Holy Spirit gives you direction. You don't wait on nothing perfect. You don't wait on a specific time. The word says farmers who wait for perfect weather, they never plant. What are you waiting for? Get immersed in his will. <laughs> when you're immersed in Christ, you're constantly breaking restraints, fears, and mindsets that hinder Christ from being seen in your life. See, the goal has always been to be consumed and wrapped up in relationship with Jesus and not in the religion of man. That's always been the goal. See, God is so mindful of us that all throughout the Bible, he gives us instructions on how to love, how to live, and how to lead just like he does. See, he gives us instructions on how to get immersed in his will and get immersed in his word. See, Solomon gave us instructions on how to get immersed in the wisdom of God. And watch this. The wisdom of God, which is the applied knowledge of the word of God, which is the will of God concerning your life. It's the will of God concerning your life. That's what he gave for us. Watch this. In the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. I want y'all to make sure y'all write that down. Take these notes. Take these notes because this is the word. This is for you to get home and study. Show yourself approved. Well, you're already at the house, so you should be studying. Take these notes. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, it reads, My son, if you receive my words... And treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her for a, as for a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Watch this, y'all. The first thing he says to do is to receive my words. See, one of the definitions of the word receive is to suffer, experience, or be subject to a specific treatment. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's easy to receive it when there's tangi a tangible promise attached to it. Oh, but, when it's, but, 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 but it's hard to receive it when it challenges your ways and how you're living. Oh, it's hard to receive the word when it challenges what you just finished telling somebody is okay. What you just finished telling somebody, well, this is my life, and this is how I plan on living. It's fine when you finish doing all those things, but all of a sudden it's hard to receive when it goes against what you think is okay. It's hard to receive. But see, it's easy to receive his words when you're immersed in his will. See, I don't read the Bible for everybody else. I don't read the Bible to preach it. I read it for me. I read it because it's nourishment, it's manna, it's fresh word and revelation for my life. I read it because I want my ears to be softened so that whenever I run across a word that may cut me. Oh, come on. See, some of y'all get mad and offended by other people. See, I'm worried about God. I'm not worried about people. It's God. When that word hit me and that thing cuts me, I need to make sure I'm together. I need to make sure my life is in order because once that thing hit, I'm feeling some kind of way. Now it's time to pray. Now it's time to go before God again. God, something ain't right. I heard the word. That thing cut me deep in my core. Now, let me go back and pray about this and whether I need to go apologize, whether I need to go make it right, whether I need to ask for forgiveness. God, I'm going to go do that. But that's what happens when we learn how to receive his word. See, immersed believers are sons. They are not moved by opinions, but they are committed to completing instructions. See, you should be so consumed by the will of God that correction even becomes an opportunity for redirection. I'm going to say that again. You should be so immersed in the will of God that when proper correction comes, you should be ready to take that as an opportunity for redirection. See, nobody wants to get immersed when they're dry. Mm -mm. Nobody, want, nobody wants to change. Nobody wants to feel or hit correction when they're dry in life. Because it's like rubbing against hard wood. Nobody likes that. But see, when you're immersed, it's okay because everywhere you look is Jesus. It's okay, Jesus. I know that was done in love. I know that was told to me in love. It's to make me better. It's to make me a greater person. You saw something in me that needed further development. So let me learn how to receive your word. See, this is why people come to service or listen to a, a, a word all day and they don't believe it's for them. Because they've closed their ears to receiving the word. Oh, that's not for me. That's for somebody else. 
Oh, no, that's for you. <laughs> that's directly for you. That's not for somebody else. That is for you. See, I want somebody, <laughs> I want somebody to type in receive his words, receive his words, receive his words. It's important in this life. The second thing that Solomon said in this word, he said is, Treasure my commands within your heart. Treasure my commands within you. See, the definition of treasure is valuable objects that are kept carefully. You never know what's in a person until you see what comes out of a person. Oh, I say that again. You never know what's in a person until you see what comes out of a person. One way I know that hurts people and hinders people and it, and, and it pretty much exposes where people really are is conflict resolution. Oh, y'all, we struggle. Some of us struggle with conflict resolution. Some of us are so ready to tear somebody's head off that we've done closed our eyes, we've done closed our ears, and we've done shoved our heart somewhere deep down to where it can't be touched. Your goal in even trying to get conflict resolution is not for understanding. It's not for change. It's not for transformation. It's for you to get revenge. Oh, I'm just waiting on them to say something so I can pop off. Or I'm just waiting for them to cross me a certain way so I can give them what I've been feeling, so I can give them what I've been thinking. And see, that's a problem. Those are the things that rest in your heart. That's where the word is supposed to be. Solomon said you're supposed to treasure his commands within you. His commands are his words. It's his will. It's what he said concerning your life. It's not about your feelings. This is about God's will, and God's will is going to always override your feelings because Lord knows when you're immersed in his will, you're going to do some things you don't feel like doing. <laughs> you're going to do some things that you don't want to do. You're going to do some things that you done told God and everybody else, I'm not doing it. That's not me. I'm tired of it. Oh, but when you're immersed in his will, you treasure his commands in your heart. You keep those things within you. It's okay for you to go to a brother. It's okay for you to go to a sister. You don't have a problem with it. I'm not out for revenge. I'm out so that we can have reconciliation. I'm here so that we can get back together. I'm coming to you in love. I'm coming to you because I love you. Because that's what's in my heart. <laughs> See, Matthew 15 and 11, New King James Version said, What goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. See, what you treasure and place within your heart will always govern your response in the face of trial and tribulation. Or your responses to challenges in life will always be more important than the presence of challenges in your life. See, challenges are guaranteed. He told us in the word. In this life, you will have trial and tribulation. Those are guaranteed. So your response to challenges, no, 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 no. It's about how you feel about these things. What comes out of you when you're faced with these things? Do you, do you, do you cut up? Do you act up? Do you forget who you really are? Mm. Watch this. Challenges are guaranteed, y'all, for some of us believers. I want y'all to type in there, treasure his commands, treasure his commands. We're going down this scripture, type in treasure his commands. That's something you're supposed to keep in your heart. It's supposed to always be with you. He's not concerned about the challenge. Those challenges, they're going to be there. <laughs> they're going to be there. The presence of them, they're going to be all around you all throughout your life. From the day you were born to the day you leave this earth, challenges are going to always be there. But how do you respond? What's in your heart? The third thing he said to do, y'all, is to incline your ear to wisdom. Watch this. To incline your ear to wisdom means to submit to verbal instruction and wisdom, watch this, of others. Ooh, not just the ones you like. <laughs> not just the leaders you like. Uh, not just the pastors you like. Uh, uh, not just the, the ones in the street that you like. No, 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 no. To all the others, you have to have ability to submit to the verbal instruction and wisdom of others especially those that God has sent to keep watch over your soul. Ooh, I say that one more time. You must submit to the verbal instruction and wisdom, especially of those who God has sent to have watch and keep over your soul. Those are your pastors. <laughs> those are the ones that God has sent with the voice to speak into where you are and call you into where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be able to follow that. You're supposed to be able to incline your ear to that. Too often believers will listen to everybody else except for those who walk in wisdom. Watch this. If you're scared to go talk to somebody because you think you know what they're going to say already and what you think they're going to say is definitely what you're not trying to do. 
that you have a problem inclining your ear to wisdom. <laughs> You're struggling with taking instruction from those that were sent to you. When you know it's tight, you know it's right. <laughs> when you know what they're going to say to you, it's going to shake you, it's going to bother you, it's going to stir you up. You know it's right. Stop avoiding people that have keys to your future. Stop avoiding people that have keys to your deliverance. These people can help you out, but you've already closed your ear. You don't want to hear no more. You don't want to hear nothing nobody has to say. You believe that you can do this thing on your own. Watch this. People that do not have evidence of a life consumed by God should not have the privilege of speaking into your ear. I say that again because some of us love motivational speakers. Oh, we love these motivational speakers. We love that they can say a couple of words and it makes you feel good. It inspires you. It encourages you. It makes you feel like you somebody. But yet there's no evidence, y'all. That's that word again. There's no evidence of a life that's consumed by God. You don't know where their faith is. You don't know if they pray. You don't know if they're worshipers. You don't know if they're good husbands, good wives. You don't know if they're good fathers, good brothers. You don't know who they are. But you love to be encouraged, and you don't care who it is. That's a problem. That is a major problem. Don't be so prideful when it comes to listening to wisdom. Remember, he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Somebody type that in. Incline your ear to wisdom. Incline your ear to wisdom. The fourth thing he says to do is apply your heart to understanding. See, this means to fall in love with learning. Ooh, that's good. I'm going to say that again. This means to fall in love with learning. To fall in love with learning. See, there's an acronym used in the embassy church, which is FAT. And that stands for to be faithful, available, and teachable. See, we're often good at showing up. We're even good at doing a certain job at making ourselves available. But the Lord knows when it comes to being teachable, teachable, when it comes to being teachable, we have a generation of believers that you just can't tell nothing. You can't say nothing to them. And you're looking at the evidence that shows God is nowhere consumed in their life. There's no evidence that God, that you're immersed in God. There's no evidence that the will of God is working in your life. You're looking at this from afar, but yet you can't tell them nothing. You can't say nothing to them. They're easy to be offended. They're easy to be, be hurt. Uh, heartbroken. They're ready to leave the church. They're ready to leave from you. They don't want to talk to you no more. They stop answering texts. They stop answering phone calls all because they don't love to learn. You got to open your ears and open your heart and know that everything we do is for us to be better. God is not calling you out. He's calling you up. He said come up a little higher. To be immersed in the will of God is to know that you're always going to be learning, to know that you're always going to be growing, to know that something is always going to be shifting in your life. Nothing will ever stay the same unless it's Jesus Christ. That's it. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the one thing that may remain, it's going to be his will. It's his will concerning your life. It's never going to change. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's never going to change. It's always going to be there. The problem with this, y'all, with them not learning or loving to learn is, is that God's will is to always be at work within you, to always be at work within you. And if you can't love to learn, then your faith will be unemployed. Unemployed. What's the purpose of having faith if you ain't going to put it to work? Come on. What's the purpose of having that faith? What's the purpose of reading that word and letting that word sink deep in in your soul and, and shift you and change you if you're not going to put it to work? What's the purpose? You're working against yourself, but that's not God's will concerning you. I'm so glad, y'all, that he's selfless. I'm so glad that Jesus is selfless and that he loves us as we are, but his goal is to transform us and shift us as we were. I'm talking about before we were even formed in our mother's womb. His goal is to change us and to shift us and to redefine us and to form us into who we were before we were formed in our mother's womb. That's his goal. I want somebody to type in, apply your heart to understanding. Apply your heart to understanding. It's important. Apply your heart to understanding. See, 
And I'm going to stop right there in that text, y'all. <laughs> and I want to urge you to continue to read it from there and discover the ways that we're encouraged to get immersed in the wisdom of God, which is the will of God that gives us the ways of God. The wisdom of God that gives us the ways of God. Oh, my God. I'm going to go back to the question that I said earlier. And this was something I had a conversation with a good brother in faith. And when he asked me, it challenged me, y'all. I asked earlier in the recording, I asked, I asked this. If you were arrested for being a spirit-filled believer, would there be enough evidence to convict you of that charge? If you, I want you to ask yourself this. This is important. Ask yourself. Because if you're not immersed in his will, there's no evidence in your life. Jesus said, if you remain in me, I'll remain in you. And if you remain in that place, there'll be evidence that I'm with you. There'll be evidence. There'll be fruit bared that shows that I'm in you. Is there enough evidence to convict you of the charges of being a spirit-filled believer? Is there enough evidence in your life? Is there fruit in your life? Look at every area. Look at how you do things. Look at how you operate. Look at your commitment to the church. Look at your commitment to your wife or to your husband. Look at your commitment to your finances. Are your finances everywhere or do you have it in order? Look at your commitment in every area of your life and ask yourself, is there enough evidence is there enough evidence to be convicted of a spirit-filled believer? Look at, the last, look at the last confrontation you had with your brother. Look at the last confrontation you had with your sister. Look at the last conversation you had with your children. Is there evidence in your life? Is there proof that he lives in you? Is there proof? Can we tell? Is it, it, can, can, can we see him in you? Are you going to jail or are you beating the charges? Are you going to jail or are you beating the charges? Is there enough in you that shows that he lives in you? I want you to type in there, remain in him, remain in him. It's impossible, y'all, for us to be immersed in the will of God if we don't understand what he thinks concerning us. His will is what he commanded in his word. He commanded in his word a life that's pleasing unto him, one that sets us apart, one that makes us holy, one that sets us as his chosen people, a chosen generation set apart just for him. But in order to be immersed in that, you have to be committed. It's a commitment issue, yo. But I'm calling you back from that place. All of the areas in your life that you struggled with commitment, all of the assignments that you drop, even the people that didn't used to trust you, all the people that didn't used to care for you because they felt you couldn't do it. Well, I'm reversing those words right now by the authority and power of Jesus Christ. You're not who they said you are. You are trustworthy. You are somebody that can be committed. You are that good husband. You are that good wife. You are that good father. You are exactly who God says you are, and you're not what people say you are. Every negative word that was spoken ill against you, oh, because you're getting immersed. You're going back. You're diving back into the will of God. You're going back into a place where it's just you and him. As the word said, you're going to remain in him, and you're going to refuse to get up until he changes you. You're going to refuse to get up until something shifts. You're going to refuse to get up until something happens in your life. Or you're in a new place with God. So tonight, y'all, before I get ready to go, I want to go ahead and, and ask y'all to begin to show tonight. There are going to be some words and things placed on the screen, even those visiting. I want you to get ready and prepare yourself to show tonight. And I want you to prepare your seeds. Prepare your seeds with some great expectations. Prepare those seeds knowing and believing deep down on the inside of you that you have evidence. That's evidence of your shift today. Let that seed be a seed of obedience. Don't worry about the, 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 the price of it. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about, I said it earlier, some people don't like to sow because they're scared to commit to sowing because they're worried about what I can do for tomorrow. Uh-uh. Believe in God for tonight. Believe in God for right now. Whatever you have, I want you to go ahead and prepare that seed. Prepare that seed with some great expectation because it's important that we bring our tithe into the storehouse. That is the word of God. And Jesus said, try me. The God said, try me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. So tonight I'm going to ask you to try God. Try God in your giving. Try God in that place and get back committed 
Get back immersed in the will of God concerning your life. And that takes commitment. If all those men can do things that immerse us in their thoughts, what more could you do if you get immersed in the will and the thoughts of God? What more can change in your life? Your whole world can change. You can break generational curses. Your whole family can be turned around if you get immersed in the will of God. Your whole family, the generations to come, can be changed and transformed if you get immersed in the will of God. I know it's not your heart to be that way. I know it's not your heart to give up. I know it's not your heart to let go. But tonight I'm calling you up. I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up because there's a new thing that God is doing. And in order to be in that place with him, in order to remain in there with him, you got to get immersed in him. You got to get wrapped up in him. I bless God for everybody that has sown. And I'm going to even ask this for those that are watching. If you don't have a church home or if you're not saved, if you're not saved and you don't know Jesus, I want to continue to offer that to you. If that's you and you're watching, I want you to say something in the comments because we want to make sure that transformation happens for you. You're not who people said you are. You're not what they wrote you off to be. You're not your last mistake. You're not your last failure at making a good decision. You're not that. You are a son of the most high God. You are those that he loves. The word says them that he loves, that them that love their God shall be strong and do great exploits. God has plans for your life, and that's in his will. It's already written. He's already commanded it. So in this new season for you, believe God to be who he is. Believe God to be supernatural. Believe him to be all-powerful. Believe him to be all-knowing. And if you don't know him, let us know right now in the comments. Somebody will get with you because the whole goal is for us to be immersed in his will. And if you stumbled on this walk as your brother in Christ, I invite you back in. And if you don't have a place to worship and you're looking for an online family, a group of people, believers, that you can get into agreement with, you can worship with, you can fellowship with, you can get immersed in the will of God with. If you're looking for that, let us know right now in the comments. This is the house for you. God is calling you. Don't let your bad mistakes and your bad decisions stop you from going and being in the places that God himself have called you to. Let God do a new thing in your life. And let that new thing start today. God, I bless you. I thank you. I honor you for this night. I thank you for the word that you let it rest on our hearts so that we might not sin against you. God, I thank you for everybody listening that has inclined their ear for understanding tonight. I pray, God, that whatever they struggle with in their hearts, whatever they struggle with in their minds, I pray, God, that it be broken off of their life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray today, God, that you're calling them trustworthy. I pray today, God, that they're coming back to you as committed sons and daughters of the Most High. God. I pray tonight, God, that their relationship is going to be reconciled. I pray tonight, God, that their marriage is coming back together. I pray tonight, God, that the relationship between them and their children is being reconciled back together. That tonight, God, you've deemed them to be trustworthy and they're now committed back to you. Today, tonight, God, I pray that they remain in you. And Father, if they remain in you, all things are possible. Fruit is evident. Because apart from you, God, they can do nothing. So, Father, I thank you. I bless you and honor you for this night. I thank you, Father, for the transformation, for the shifting. I thank you tonight, God, that because we dived into your will, that we got immersed in your will, we're better. <laughs> we're better people. We've come up a little higher. There's transformation and shift for us, for our loved ones, and for our family. I thank you, bless you, and honor you for everything, God. It's in your son Jesus' name that I pray. I say amen, amen, and amen. Bless God for you all. Good night. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure that you share this. Pass this out to your brothers, your sisters, your family, your cousins during this holiday season. God bless you all, and I love you.